love that. Why can we not do that? Why can that not be a successful model? You know, I, it's so great. I it's don't see why not. It's so great. I mean, this, this guy, he was cooking um, the big uh, gambas gamberas for us. I must have spent $1,000 in the Boqueria in Barcelona in two days on beer and shrimp alone, <laughs> right? And just, jamon, who needs jamon? Just bring me more of this stuff. But just watching these guys work and the interaction with the customers and, and um, how live it is. Mm-hmm. It's so alive. We're here in this country. We have this, like... I'm going to sit down. You're going to take my order. It's going to go in here. It's going to go here and here. When I'm cooking, I, w- I want to give it to you. Yeah. You know, I want to give it to you. I don't want it to go through six different sets of hands and, and arrive on the table. I always say tacos are like ice cubes, but um, there's a part of the, you know, doing business with anybody is a connection. Mm-hmm. It's always a, a, a connection. And y- when you lose it, you sort of become detached from the whole process and you don't care as much. You let my guys have somebody sitting at their counter that they can talk to, and it's a, it's a different experience yeah, for them. Absolutely. And still the fact they can see, we still have that connection. We're still, we're working for you, you know, for you right there. And um, it, it's a hard job. It's a hard business, but that's what makes it worthwhile, yeah. I think, for me. So yeah. that's a lot of obsessions, isn't it? No, no, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. I I want to be your first customer in that scenario. <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of like that sushi bar scenario. Mm-hmm. You know, you sit at the bar because you want to interact with the person behind the bar. Yeah. I know for my wife and I, we always sit at a bar mm-hmm. when we're out for a meal, if we can't, if we don't have the kids, because we want to interact mm-hmm. with the person behind the bar and talk about the drinks and the food and, mm-hmm. and be given that opportunity to talk about it. Yeah. I love that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It, let, it lets the customer in, too. Because people are fascinated with the production of Mm -hmm. food. They are. Even if if they don't cook, they're still interested. They're going to watch. Because everybody eats. You know, we eat three to seven times a day, depending on who you talk to. Um, It matters to bring them in, too. Absolutely. There's a place in Tequila. Have you been down to Tequila? Mm -hmm. La Capilla. It's one of the uh, top 100 bars in the world. Is this the place with the Coke drink on the corner? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. (laughs) And so, you know, you go in there and you look around. There's not much to be desired there. Mm -mm. There's probably an old TV on playing some novellas. There's maybe some music playing louder than the TV. The bathroom is almost horrific if you have to use it. Mm. Um, There's only a couple tables and some beat-up chairs. But if you were um, there long enough ago, you would experience the owner Mm -hmm. making you a drink. And when I took guests there... When they first got there, they're like, what's the deal with this place? Why is it so special? I said, well, give it time. And it, it goes along with what your your vision is or what you're obsessing about is that not only would you get a cocktail made in front of you, but he would reach behind him and open up the refrigerator mm-hmm. methodically, mm-hmm. bring out a brick of cheese, cut it in little squares, put a toothpick in each square, and then put that in front of you. You still haven't gotten your drink yet. Mm-hmm. And then he'd get some meat out of the other cooler and slice up some thin pieces of meat or something. Then you'd get your drink and then he'd bring some peanuts over to you and you start to realize it's not about the building. Mm -hmm. It's about the experience with the owner of this place and the service that he wants to give you. And you almost feel like he's sharing his lunch with you Mm -hmm. when he pulls that cheese out and unwraps it and you leave there going, wow, that was incredible. Right? Yeah. It's a Coke with tequila and some lime and some yep. rock salt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's about the experience. And, yeah. it, and it's exactly what you're saying. So yeah. I get that. Well, we've gabbled on for almost 40 minutes Good plus. Heavens. I really appreciate you sharing your story, but more importantly, your restaurant and your skill over there. And I hope that more people have a chance to go by and, and see what we're talking about. Um, they can grab your cookbook. We talked about that a little bit. And. We'd love to see him walk through the front door, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's been my pleasure. If somebody wants to find you, um, what's the best way you like to be gotten a hold of? Uh, Go to the restaurant, say hi, cookbook, website. Yeah, through the restaurants, through the website. You can uh, pop a message up on Facebook uh, for Sol Cocina or Solita Tacos. Okay. I'm always around. Or just call and say, I need to leave a message for Chef Deb. And, and you know what? That That is a true testament because you are always around. I, I've been in the restaurant several times, and it seems like you're always back there, uh, a part of the action. Trying. Yeah. Trying. 
Appreciate it. Okay, well, that, that's uh, that's our show for today. Uh, Chef, thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks. Well, once again, I finished another podcast, and I'm hungry for Mexican food and being south of the border, whether it's drinking wine, margaritas, or beer, and eating some tacos. Uh, I did head straight over to the restaurant after the interview and had some tacos, and, you know, she delivers every single time. So please visit her restaurant, support her. Again, you can get the cookbook on our website, Baja United Wines, if you want to get a, a copy of that, or you can get them through her restaurant if you're in town. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please share the show if you're enjoying it. As David Meltzer always tells me, value for value. And each and every morning, wake up, think about what you're grateful for and, and how we have more than enough in our lives. And I know that I certainly do, just looking at my children when I wake up every morning, knowing how blessed I am to have them. I just can't wait to... Uh, get up and see what they have to say every single day. So thanks for tuning in to the show. Look forward to putting on another great show for you next week. Take care.